Total Screen proudly presents the Weekly Set Podcast with Tyson Gifford and William Rorick. Episode 204, recorded April 27, 2019. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Set, the official podcast of the Total Screen. I am your host. My name is Tyson, and joining me today, as always, is my partner in crime here at the Total Screen, William Rorick. Hello. So today, as usual, we are going to be talking about Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 2, titled A Night of the Seven Kingdoms. And then after that, we're going to make some predictions about the next episode, because next week's episode, which at the time we're recording this, is going to be tomorrow, that episode is going to Everybody a huge has, battle. Everybody has tea and hugs and there's yeah. rainbows. It's gonna be a huge battle. A huge rap battle. Yeah, a huge rap battle. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so we're going to make a few predictions about some things that we think might or might not happen in that episode. Just be a pretty quick segment, and then that'll be it. So let's kick things off with the episode itself. We're talking again about uh, Season 8, Episode 2, A Night of the Seven Kingdoms. So this episode starts off kind of where the last one left off. Not like right after, but with the, the, the next eventual thing, you know? Which is that the last episode ended with Jamie arriving at Winterfell and, and is looking around and his eyes fall right onto Bran is staring at him and he has that like and it, immediately like he, he's reminded of what he did you know this, this thing like he had forgotten about and and now like there's this huge freaking reminder it's like oh shit and yeah and even even though like Bran doesn't like really say anything Jamie <laughs> like is is instantly filled with guilt and he and he decides he has to bring himself around to apologizing yeah it's it's he's he's like a rut row this is not good yeah <laughs> uh but yeah that's that's where we left off this episode begins with Daenerys speaking at you know i i wrote it down in our show notes here as the trial but it's not really an official trial it's more like you know he's addressing court court being Daenerys uh John and Sansa uh sitting at the at the front of the house table and he's before them kind of you know and Daenerys is, is basically you can tell already not really willing to give him a chance she's talking about how her and her brother would talk about the night king or not the what am I talking about uh the king slayer and how horrible he is and the things they would do to him if they got back to Winterfell or not right uh, right to Westeros and uh so yeah so yeah, so Santa is kind of like this this is a horrible person I don't want him here Sansa and uh you know and Daenerys also doesn't want Jamie around but Tyrion stands up for him you know for his brother and he's like He's like, I know my brother, and Daenerys immediately cuts him off. Like, you knew your sister? She was yeah. supposed to bring troops. Where are those troops? Or, or, and, and Daenerys, and Daenerys is like, kind of, kind of belittles him. I mean, she's, she's like, she's, she's like, of course you'd stand up for your, for your brother, you know, just up to the moment he slits my throat. Yeah. And, this is the moment where Jamie reveals that not only is his sister not coming, uh, to help in the fight, but that, that he's, that, that, uh, she's actually bought and paid for the Golden Company. Yeah. The Golden her mercenaries to, to take back everything that they lost. Right. She's, uh, against Daenerys. She's got Euron Greyjoy and his fleet and the Golden Company for her army now. Yeah. So, so Jamie reveals this, making Daenerys even more pissed off. She's just not happy at all about this. Uh, she shuts down Tyrion when he tries to speak up for Jamie. She, she but, is not happy with Tyrion at this at this juncture. Yeah, but Bri- Brienne ends up standing yeah. up for Jamie, though. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Brienne stands up for Jamie, and, and she recalls and, when, and when was, Jamie saved her virtue as a lady. And this is different because while well, Daenerys doesn't know Brienne, knows like mm-hmm. knows her from Jack shit. Sansa does. Sansa knows that Brienne is an honorable person. So basically, what happens is when Brienne vouches for Jamie, Sansa accepts that because Sansa's like, well, if you're vouching for him, then I can accept it. 
Yes. Well, Bran doesn't even, doesn't just mention that. I mean, first she says that Jamie saved her virtue and that yeah. that's what cost him his hand. Cause, well, cause Daenerys had made a one handed joke. Basically, yeah. you know. Well, 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 what happened? Well, well, it's a good story because she, she points out that she was his captor. She captured him. She had him and she was taking him to Winterfell to face mm-hmm. justice, you know? Uh, you know, so when. No, no, she was, she was releasing him. That was on Catelyn's orders. Oh, that's right. It's been so long, man. Yeah, she, she was releasing him, and then they were they were jumped by uh, Stark loyalists. And yeah, they were gonna the Boltons rape. is who it was, yeah. Yeah, it was the Boltons, yeah. They were they were gonna they were gonna rape her, and Jamie had no reason to stick around or do anything to help her out, and he he defended her, you know. And that cost him his hand. Yeah, they weren't even allies, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that cost him his hand. So to Brienne, that proved to her that Jamie Lannister is a man of honor, despite what everybody else believed about him. On top of that, she brings up that Sansa actually owes her life to him because Brienne saved Sansa, but Brienne wouldn't have been able to save Sansa if Jamie hadn't armored and equipped her. Right. And sent her off to do it. You know, like she wouldn't have been able to make it to, to help her. So she owes that to Jamie as well because of a promise that he had made to her mom that he would free her daughter. So he would free Catelyn's daughters. So again, this points towards honor that to him upholding his oath. We also know, which wasn't brought up, which I'm actually kind of surprised. I thought like in that last moment in the last episode before when Bran like, like st- was staring him down, they set it up as like, uh oh, kind of moment. But I always thought from that moment that as the three eyed raven, Bran's not really petty. So I didn't think he was going to like be, you know, that, that him waiting for Jamie had anything to do with like giving Jamie his come up and so much as that he was going to help him. And so what I thought was going to end up happening was that Bran was going to reveal why Jamie killed the Mad King to end up giving him support. He didn't end up needing to say anything about that, but he also didn't say anything about Jamie pushing him out the window. Right. He just kind of ended up having to say nothing, which makes me kind of wonder why he like waited all night out for him. <laughs> yeah, it did. So the result is we we got Jamie we got Jamie is allowed to stay at Winterfell and help with the battle. Yes. Uh, Daenerys, Daenerys basically defers to Sansa's judgment on. Well, she on hears Daenerys. Sansa's judgment, then she looks to John and asks for his judgment. Yeah. And John's, you know, is just basically like, John's like, well, we just need every man we can get. Yeah. Yeah. John, John is like, I'm not arguing with my sister on this. <laughs> okay. I think like, it's even less than that. It's more just straight up like, it's more straight like, up. we don't have time for this shit, you know, like, come on. Yeah, right, know, right. This right. is a man willing to fight. Let's yeah, yeah. John is in full. We need to fight the dead mode like everybody who is breathing is our ally at this point yeah like, like if Cersei did show up John would accept her you mm-hmm. know that's like everybody else would probably bicker to no end but John would be like no we, we need this and we, we see this in John's camp because like there's there's like parts later in the episode where there, there's a scene where uh, um Davos is serving out food to some of the people and, and some of the people are coming up and one guy says like I'm not a warrior I don't know how to fight and 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 Davos is like, well, we all need to fight, you know? Mm-hmm. And the, the idea basically being presented there is that, like, all the farmers, all of the workmen, the carpenters, everybody, they're all going to be fighting. Davos relates that he wasn't a soldier mm-hmm. himself, but that he's been he's been through two major battles now. And, and he, he managed to make it out re- relatively unscathed. So he, he says this as words of encouragement to this man that he's sending off the fight. He's like, you know, if I can do it, you can probably. <laughs> Do it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, in that same scene, he ends up seeing like a little girl, uh, yeah. and trying to encourage her in the opposite direction. Well, she wants to go out and fight, you know, she wants yeah. to go because her, I, I think she said her brother was a soldier. Yeah. That her brother yeah. was going to be fighting. Yeah. And so she wanted to go out and fight and it was adorable. And, and basically, well, they played it up because she's got this burn on her face that makes yeah. her visually reminiscent of, uh, Siren. Oh, right, right. Siren, uh, uh Stannis's daughter. Who who um, Davos had, was very close to? Who had grayscale? Yes, yes. And so, like in place of grayscale, this girl has like a burn on her face. Yeah, yeah, has a burn on her cheek. You know. Otherwise, I kind of wonder if it's the actress who plays Gilly. I wonder if it's like a re- uh, girl related to her because she looks a lot like her. She looks a lot like yeah. <laughs> she she, she has like the same mouth and chin. It's like weird. And, then, <laughs> and Gilly does show up in that scene. 
She wants to go out and fight, but instead of just telling her no, you know, Gilly kind of turns it around and says, you know, you, you can be brave, you can protect the people in the crypt. Mm-hmm. You know, you they, people, she, she's like, well, the people in the crypt need somebody to protect them, so why don't you go down there and protect them? She's like, well, because like, when she hears a girl say she wants to fight, she's like, well, that's really good to hear because my, my son and I are going to be in the crypts and we need somebody to protect us. Yeah, yeah. And so it kind of gives her, like, you know, a purpose but at the same time gets her to stay in the crypts rather than go out to the battlefield. Right, right, because, you know, you don't want to send a five-year-old girl into a battle (laughs) against zombies. Um, (laughs) Why not? Why ever not? (laughs) Yeah. We should talk about, we we talked about um, Jamie's trial and Bran and kind of their interactions. They had, they, they kind of expounded upon that at a weirwood well, tree. It was, yeah, they, well, Bran is sitting by the weir- weirwood tree, which I, I don't know. He has like some connection to the tree now. Um, <laughs> well, that's how he, he was able to, to get visions by like, you know, being right, near the tree or right, drawing on the tree, drawing on the tree's power. So he's out by there in a, yeah. And Jamie decides it's time he walked up to Bran and apologized for what he did. You know, Bran basically responds by saying, well, I'm not Bran anymore. <laughs> and Jamie's like, what? What What do you mean you're not Bran? Yeah, it's basically <laughs> the same reaction like Sansa had when he told her. Right, right. Like, exactly. What does that mean? I don't I don't understand. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, Bran is like, yeah, Jamie's like, I'm changed. I'm not that guy anymore. You know, I, I've matured. I've changed from that guy. And Bran is like, yeah, that's cool. I'm not Bran, so I don't really care. <laughs> 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 but he's also he's like he says that you know yeah you changed but that's because you pushed me out the window right right <laughs> so, so if you hadn't pushed me out that window you never would have changed you right. know and Bran would never change Bran would never become the three eyed raven so I think yeah Bran, Bran's whole point was like that was an event that needed to happen by destiny mm-hmm. so he's not. He, he's not resentful over it because now he, now, now that Bran has become the three-eyed raven, he sees the bigger picture, the bigger picture of destiny, what his destiny is. He and, still doesn't give Jamie like absolution or anything. No, he doesn't, but no, he doesn't, he doesn't say, don't worry, it's cool, you're okay. He just, he just basically, he doesn't give him absolution, he just basically tells him. Well, Does Jamie kind of ask him like, well, what about after this? And Bran's like, how do you know there isn't after this? <laughs> right, right, Bran's being cheeky, right? Or is yeah. he, or is he being cheeky? Maybe he's is being truthful maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's being cheekily truthful yes <laughs> but but yeah that was the whole point of it basically from Bran's perspective is that was just the wheels of destiny uh he Bran needs to be needed to be the three-eyed raven for the for the final bat for this battle mm-hmm and that's the way, like, he started his journey on becoming Three-Eyed Raven is getting pushed out of the tower. Yeah. So next up we have, uh, there's a meeting where, uh, or Jorah, um, ends up convincing Daenerys that not only to keep Tyrion around and that Tyrion's worth keeping around and that even though he made mistakes, like, it, he's still valuable. Right. But also he, he hints at something else saying, like, there's something else you should do as well. And that leads us directly into a scene where Daenerys approaches approaches Sansa and has kind of a sit down meeting with her. Dana- Daenerys kind of has a meeting with Sansa where Daenerys is like us women, right? <laughs> like, 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 like sisters doing it for themselves. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, didn't you see Avengers Endgame? Yeah. Did, yeah. Did you see Avengers Endgame? Well, yeah. So, so Daenerys is trying to take that attack. It's, it's working a little bit. And then until, until the subject of, Sansa bending the knee comes up, then then it hits, then all the sisterly womanly love hits hits a speed bump immediately. Where Sansa's <laughs> like, Sansa brings it up. She's she's like, you know, when this is over, you know, I, you know, I, us Northerners, we're we're independent. You know, we're yeah. we're not going to bend the knee. And and you could already see like Daenerys being like, oh fuck no. <laughs> well, she like withdraws her hand because she had put her hand on Sansa. Yeah, yeah. Hand, you could, you and could, you could see her like slowly like pull her hand away, but. But, you know, but that's, that's interrupted before that can become a full blown thing. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a couple of interruptions in this episode that interrupt moments like that. Uh, yeah. I think both having to deal with Daenerys actually, but this, yeah. part, <laughs> this interruption of Daenerys comes because we get a, a visit. Sansa gets a visit from Theon Greyjoy. Yes. Who has, uh, returned. He, he gives the news to Daenerys that his sister is okay and that she's now gone to take back the Iron Islands for Daener- her. Daenerys is kind of like, well, why aren't you there 
Yeah, right. and he turns to Sansa and says that he wants to kind of uh, fight on behalf of the Starks. To, yeah, he wants to fight at Winterfell on behalf of the Starks. So he he's come full circle to where to where being like a I I forget what it's called like a house 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 boy of the Starks who betrayed them, you know, and kind of was and was an asshole. To now he he's full circle now where he's back at the Starks and with the Starks and he's loyal. Again. Yeah. He was yeah. a he was a ward of the Starks. Yeah, he was a ward. That was the word I was thinking of. I was like, oh, I can't think of that word. It's like yeah. <laughs> now now he's uh, uh yeah he he wants to kind of make it up. He he has he's on a redemption arc, and this is yeah. like you know fighting for them is kind of like the peak of that redemption arc. Right. So he does that. Sans is very happy to see him. They embrace and have a little moment, and Daenerys is like, but what about me? Why isn't anybody hugging me and saying they want to fight for me? <laughs> uh, besides that, or uh, we see a scene as it starts to become dark, where John, Sam, uh, and Ed, the last three of their group from the Night's Watch, as well as Ghost, who we see kind of blink and you miss him. He's just kind of like there in the corner of the screen when these three are talking. Right. It's just kind of like there. No, no fanfare, no mention of him, no like, like, you know, they don't have like a, a moment where John introduces Daenerys to him, you know, like she did with the dragons for him. Just no, he's just here on the wall in this one moment, <laughs> the wall of Winterfell. And it's basically just them talking about kind of shooting the shit about the old days and about what's coming. And there's, there's a great moment because it's, uh, Sam basically is in this position now where he's like, he, he killed, uh, he killed one of those like cannibal guys from the other side of the wall. He killed, he killed a knight. I White Walker, and, and he sleeps with a woman. <laughs> He's had sex with a woman, and Ed's like sitting here, like you know, ha- has no kind of glorious position as far as like having killed like any you know significant um, creature or anything like that. And then also is like you know celibate because of the Night's Watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, celibate because of the Night's Watch. <laughs> it's like this. If you needed any more proof that it's the end of the world, you <laughs> Sam's yeah. got like everything. <laughs> Sam's like the manliest guy there, you know. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty funny. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty. Yeah, the yeah, I, I like that little uh, Night Swatch reunion. Yeah, that was a cool moment. Well, it was cool because we had the moment when they showed up at the castle, and they it, they had this moment, and they queued up the music, and like Ed and John were running to her, they're gonna give each other like a hug or something, and and then Dorman just like dashed in and smashed into John. Oh and yeah, I remember. <laughs> interrupted the moment. It was great. Yeah, Dorman completely interrupted. The moment oh that was awesome and then we got the bears uh this was just a small moment via where we saw jorah was talking to liana his cousin who, yeah she's getting all geared up and ready to fight and jorah is kind of talk trying to talk her out of it but it's like he doesn't know how much of a badass she is he's been he's been away too long like he, he was not prepared and, and and she she's basically like no i'm a badass i'm gonna go fight you can't stop me so don't even try and then he's just like okay <laughs> yeah he kind of gives up but i think the point of that is that like as they're having this conversation sam's like watching it yeah sam's and watching he, he cuts it. in you know he's like oh i didn't want to interrupt and then he has this touching moment with jorah where he gives him his father's sword yeah he gives him his father's sword because this, he's like, they have this complicated history now between jorah and sam because sam saved jorah's life yes and then jorah turned around and like went to reward him with the narrow and ended up dropping like the most painful truth bomb on him. Right, yeah. About his his family. Well, you know? Sam's rationale is like like, well, his father's dead, his brother is dead. Sam is not a fighter. Sam has no use for a sword. So Yeah, he said he wa- he wanted to carry it into battle, but he like he could barely lift it up. Yeah, he could barely lift it up. Yeah. It's a it's a two handed great sword. It's like like ice, the sword that, that uh Ned uh, Stark yeah. used. Yeah, Ned Stark sword, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a huge sword like that. Yeah, yeah, most most of those uh most of those family swords, you know, those Valerian steels, there there's a lot of great swords, you know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he can't lift it, you know, he 
his rationale the door is like better to give it to somebody who can actually use it. And it's not just anybody that can use it, but somebody that, you know, again, they, ha- yeah. so they have this connection because, you know, Sam owes a lot to, yeah. um, Jorah Mormont, Jorah's father. Right, right. And so he's like, you know, because, well, uh, yeah, because uh, John's got father, your sword. Here's, here's my sword. Basically. Because Jorah's father was, uh, was one of the commanders of the Night's Watch. Yes. Yeah. And it's, uh, that's kind of like the basis of Sam's relationship with Jorah is, is that Sam's respect for Jorah's father right. and wanting to kind of, um, see Jorah through it out of respect for his father. So yeah, you had a little moment for that. Uh, meanwhile, down in the smithy, uh, Arya has a little talk with, uh, Gendry about making, about her weapon. She's like, are you making my weapon yet? And he's like, his perspective is like, I'm too busy making all this other dragon glass stuff. I don't have time to, to make a weapon for, for you to, to play around with. Cause he hasn't seen Arya since, you know, season two. So yeah. to, in his perspective, she's still this like little tomboy that, you know, but Arya, as she's like talking, to him and trying to like nail down no you need to make this weapon for me she's like picking up dragon glass and throwing it at a wall and she's like nailing like within centimeters of, of each other like every single pl- one you know right like, perfect throw you know and, and it's this moment where Gendry is kind of like a little bit blown away and intimidated at the same yeah, time yeah. You know? he's, he's kind of like oh okay get right on it yeah yeah he, he, yeah he, he's pretty uh blown away and he's pretty turned on too right <laughs> they're, they've been kind of flirting with each other back and forth. Yeah, they're like flirting. That that comes to a climax in this episode. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, what did you think about it? There's there's a lot of mixed reactions because it's kind of weird because we saw weird. Arya grow up. Well, you really remember Arya as a little girl, but she is in a sense she kind of feels like you know the audience's little sister. And it, yeah, and it is kind of it, it, it was kind of weird for me to see somebody. I had figured out as a little girl, like, had a sex scene, but she is an adult now. She, her character is, has, is, an, is an adult now. Uh, so, I don't know, it was, it was jarring, but I guess, I guess at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with it, but it was just <laughs> a bit, it was, it was a bit jarring to see that. Yeah, definitely. It was a little hard to see because of that aspect of it. Um, there were also a lot of people, like, there were some articles that were written by people that were, like, complaining and saying that the sex scene doesn't express, you know, the vulnerability that, you know, is feminine sexuality and stuff oh, like that. No it's clue. like I have no clue about that. Uh, I mean, if you... I mean, I'm not the best person to judge whether yeah. that's true or not. So, so I'm just going to. What are you talking back. about? Will, you and I are the <laughs> foremost experts on female sexuality. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that one alone. <laughs> no, but it's, it's just kind of the, to me, the whole thing is like, it's, it goes to the theme of the entire episode. It's not about vulnerability. It's not about having a caring first time. It's not well, about it's, it's that about, at all. It's about, it's about people like they're it's having the world trending. Too. Yeah. The world thing. They're heading into the battle of their lives a lot of them are going to die possibly all of them well that's the Um, thing it's like it's they're not going into the battle with the assumption that a lot of them are going to die they're going into this battle with the assumption that all of them are going to die right right everybody that's kind of the assumption they all have like none of them think they're going to survive this and basically it's just Arya wanting to do something with gendry somebody that she loves you Mm. know before she dies, you know, and, and never gets to do it. It's not a name off her list. It's, it's a, it's a deed off her list. It's a deed off her list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it's with somebody she cares about. So that, that's, that's what it is to her. It, it doesn't really mean anything beyond that, you know, it's, right. it's, and that's the theme of the entire episode is like last night on earth. You know, this is like a common theme you see like in, in anything and in, in books and in um, video games. And whenever there's like this, like huge, like, like, you know, the world's coming to an end type battle. They always have that moment where everybody's kind of doing the, the thing that they would do at the end of the, at the end of their life. Right, right. You if, know, and, if, and if sex you, is if, a big one. If you knew you were going to die, you know, what, what are you going to immediately cross off your bucket list? You know, fuck, are you going to get drunk? Are you going to tell stories? Are you going to, what, what are you going to do? There's, you're going to have something that you're going to do. Right, right. And Aria wasn't going to sit around talking to the hound and Barrett. Right. She, she said, <laughs> I'm not spending my last moment 
Simmons talking to you two. Yeah. And, so it's, it's the, that, that was a scene right before she went and, and lost her V card to, uh, Gendry is, uh, she, she was, the hound was kind of sitting well on his way to full drunkenness on kind of like one of the bridge walls in Winterfell and just kind of like sitting there drinking. And Arya approached him and had a little conversation with him, drank, you know, some alcohol with him. And then Beric showed up and I love the hound's kind of reaction to Beric where he's just like, he's like, Oh, great. You, you know, <laughs> the hound, uh, the hound approaches potentially dying the same way he approaches everything else. You know, he just sits there and drinks and he's a sourpuss. Drinks and whinges, uh, yeah. yeah. Whinges, yeah. <laughs> but I just love, like, Beric's role as kind of like the party. The, the, uh, you know, the hound's kind of somewhat enjoying, you know, just sitting next to Arya and spending some time with her. Right. And, yeah, you yeah. know, sharing some alcohol and then Beric shows up and it's like, oh, fuck this guy. Yeah, yeah. it's like, oh, jeez. <laughs> Buzzkill. Yeah. <laughs> and Beric's like, hi, guys. How you yeah. doing? <laughs> Captain Buzz Killington. Barracks here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys haven't been playing charades without me. <laughs> <laughs> Like this guy. Oh, God. <laughs> but this leads me to, like, you know, we, we talked about Arya and Gendry getting it on for their last night on Earth, but uh, or last night on Planetos, as it's called, <laughs> for Game of Thrones. But the best scene in this entire episode, or, like, not just scene, but just, like, numerous scenes that keep cutting back to this one setting, is uh, Jamie and Tyrion hanging out around the, the hearth, which is, you know, the fire place basically yeah in Winterfell and they're and they're kind of talking about like you know Tyrion's like I wish yeah. dad was alive to see this and Jamie gives him a look like you do yeah Jamie and Tyrion's like, like yeah he'd be so pissed that we're gonna like that we're killing ourselves to defend the starts yeah, yeah. <laughs> Castle. And, and and uh and Tyrion's just like I would just love to see the look on his face yeah and Jamie kind of smiles and so they're having like a little brotherly moment at the end of their lives as they I suspect and then uh, Davos. Well, first in. Brienne and Podrick show oh, up. Oh yeah, first Brienne and Podrick show up. And and Brienne's like, "Oh, sorry to intrude. We'll get out of there." And Jamie's like, "Oh no, 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 you know." And yeah, just sit and uh, visit. You know, it's it's the end of the world. So it's great because yeah. like Tyrion offers Podrick wine, and and Podrick's like, I "Brienne's can't. all against it." Yeah, Brienne's like, "Like no, Podrick." And then and then eventually she's like, "Okay, just just a little bit." And, and like half and a glass, half a glass, and Tyrion like overfills the glass. <laughs> And, and then and Brienne, just drunkenly pushes it onto him, like, and and then like Brienne is like, I'm not drinking, you know. She she's like, I want to have my wits so about. Eventually, she gives in. Uh, and then uh, Davos and Tormund enter, and oh my god, the scene gets amazing when Tormund enters because like Tormund gives Brienne the look that he always gives her, and like she cringes again. <laughs> yeah, it's great because he's like, he's like, this could be our last night on Earth, yes. and and. She's like, I'm glad you survived. She said, I'm glad you're here. And then, like, he gets, like, this big smile, and she's like, I mean that you survived Eastwatch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then Mormon notices, notices Jamie, and it's funny because he says, uh, he's all, they call you King Killer, which is, you yeah. know, it's King Slayer. But it's funny because Jamie's like, I'm sure somebody has. <laughs> well, well, we're seeing, like, uh, we're seeing kind of like a rivalry develop now, right? Because, uh, because I think Brian Brienne, Brienne is really into Jamie, right? Okay. And, I th and I think Jamie is into Brienne. Yeah, uh, and Tormund's really into uh, Brienne. Brienne but and Brienne uh, Milk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tormund's really into Brienne, but Brienne does not feel the same way about Tormund. Uh, <laughs> and it, it's, it's hilarious. Oh yeah, because they're telling the story, like, uh, you know, Tormund, Tormund, like, Tormund, like, starts trying to mock Jamie a little bit by calling him, like, the King Killer, King Slayer. And then Tormund, Tormund basically, like, that's nothing, you know, they call me Giant Killer, you know? Giant Spain. Yeah, Giant Spain. And he's like, you know how I got the name Giant Spain? And oh my god, I, I died at this. <laughs> because, because he talks about the story where like or like he get, he gets adopted by this giant and he drinks milk from her tit or some shit and then he starts drinking like this flask that's supposed to be giant's milk and it's like dribbling down his beard and shit and oh, he's like, like guzzling down yeah, he's like flask. guzzling we've seen him drink this drink before and he referred to it as like a it's it's like a beyond the wall drink yeah it's like fermented milk yeah fermented it's just, milk. just horrifying sounding it, it, yeah it's probably like super disgusting 
disgusting. And <laughs> oh my god, that was cringe city. Yeah, he's he's guzzling down this milk like just like for a very long time, like to, as a way of like showing off. Right. Which is what makes it so cringy. And, and, like, and he's, oh, it's and everybody's down like, his beard. And everyone's just kind of like, at first, everyone's kind of like, like, this guy's weird. And then it just keeps going on and on. <laughs> and it's just like, you see their faces change from like, this guy's kind of weird to like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like everybody's, everybody's just horrified at that point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he like looks between Jamie and Tyrion. And then finally Davos is like, oh, I think I'll have that drink after all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he convinced Davos to drink. Uh. <laughs> but that's not it for that scene at the hurt. There's like a no, lot of stuff a, there that happens, well, and it's well, all there's great. A, there's there's a thing right where we're like, uh, you know. Brienne, Bri- you know, so- somebody brings up, you know, that Brienne should, you know, somebody calls Brienne Sir Brienne, and she said, "Oh yeah, it was a uh, Tyrion called her Sir Brienne, then corrected himself and said, oh, 'Oh, I'm sorry, Lady Brienne.' Lady Brienne, and, and then Brienne's like, yeah, yeah, and Brienne's like, yeah, I'm not a knight. Only, only knights can be sirs. And well, Tor- Tormund asked. Tormund was like, you're not. Why not, sir? Oh, yeah, you're yeah, not yeah, a knight. Yeah. yeah, why not, sir? You're not a knight. And she said, no, women can't be knights. And Tormund's like, why not? <laughs> she said, uh, tradition, and he was like. Like, fuck tradition. Yeah, fuck tradition. And he's like, if if you were if if you lived beyond the wall, I would have knighted you ten times over. And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that leads to this really sweet moment where Jamie comes to the realization that well, Jamie th- says, this is something he realizes, I think, for the first time that like, of course, you know, Brand's like this tomboy that cares about honor and chivalry and and all these knightly things, and it, it it's never anything she's never brought up to him like. Oh, I want to be a knight so bad. You know, she didn't like go into a Disney musical. Right. If only I was a knight, you know. Well, well, she, well, she, well, she, well, she's too proud. She, she's a very, yeah. yeah, she's too proud to like ask for things or beg for things like that. But yeah. you can see that realization on Jamie's face. Like, well, of course, this is what she's always wanted to be a knight. You know, this is obvious now. And so he, he comes to, he, he remembers like, well, actually, you don't need a you king. Don't, yeah. Any yeah. knight can make a knight. Right. And he's like, and she, she's like, I, I don't care about being a knight. She's just, you know, in denial about it. And you can see, like, you know, Podrick looking at her like, like, no, you want to be a knight, you know? And she finally is like, you know, kind of like starting to kind of accept it more. And Jamie's like, pulls out a sword and says, Neil, I'll prove it to you. I'll make you a knight right now. And she's kind of like, nah, nah, I want, you know, nah, it's okay. Nah. Yeah, she's being bashful. Yeah. And then finally she kind of, she gets up slowly and, and it's this really powerful moment where just how hesitantly she approaches it, it, you know? It's this great moment between Jamie and Brienne. Yes. And everybody watching, because everybody watching is into it. Yeah. You can tell. It's like, there's not a single person there going like, what? A woman? Night? Yeah. Why I never? Like, none of them. All of them are excited about this. Um, They're all excited for, for Brienne and and then Brienne is she she gets knighted yeah, she and gets she knighted. she rises as as Sir Brienne of Tarth. She is a uh, official. Yes, and you see her break into this kind of like unrepentant smile. Yes, it was a great scene. I loved it. Uh, that that whole scene. And again, it ends a torment with this and, huge uh, smile, clapping like an infant yes. that just saw a magic trick. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was a great scene. I love that from like torment and his craziness to like you know everybody like like like. All the like all the uh all the uh pure honorable characters trying to abstain from drinking and then finally just being like fuck it I'm gonna get a drink and then and then finally to that scene where Jamie knighted Brienne that the whole scene was amazing but even that wasn't it because after that Tyrion's like we could go for a song oh that's right they sing a song they and, sing and a he's song. looking around he's trying to get somebody to sing he's like surely somebody knows a song and he's going around and he looks at Davos and Davos is like he's all no you'll you'll be looking for an early death if I start Start singing, and he looks at at Tormund, and Tormund just kind of like, uh, uh, no, no, yeah. He, I think he glances past Brienne, who's kind of just looks mortified, and then as he's doing this. Podrick just starts singing. And so Podrick starts singing the song. It's an, it's a new song that we haven't heard yet on the show. And he's, it's from the books, but it's, hasn't been on the show yet. And so he's singing through this song and it's kind of somber and it, it's going through and it's showing all these, uh, as it's going through, it's showing these people, you know, getting ready for kind of the end of the world. And you see, you know, uh, uh, Grey Worm and Masande kind of kissing. You see Arya and Gendry kind of like post coitus 
laying in bed. You see, you know, it, it's, it's kind of just showing the perspectives of people, and that leads to the crypts where uh, John is sitting in front of a statue of Lyanna Stark, and Daenerys approaches him. And John Spoon, we should say, has been kind of cagey about Daenerys this whole episode. Like, after they had that kind of trial thing for Jamie, like, Daenerys kind of turned to, like, she wanted to, like, say something to John, and John was just, just, like, out of the room, like, immediately. Right. And we know why. It's because last week he found out he was a Targaryen, and yeah. that he's related to her, oh, and he's having trouble facing oh, her. John, John is in the crypt, staring at the statue of Lyanna and Rhaegar. Well, it's, no, it's, it's not Rhaegar, Lyanna, just Lyanna. Just Lyanna, yeah, they bring up Rhaegar. Yeah, Lyanna, he's his mother. At the statue, he's staring at the statue of Lyanna, and and Daenerys meets him in the crypt, and at first she doesn't quite get why he's down there staring at the statue of Lyanna. We see, like, and she's like, who's she? And yeah, he says, that's Lyanna Stark. And, and then, she immediately goes yeah, into kind of like, you know... Daenerys like, immediately goes into like, kind of, oh yeah, it's a shame Rhaegar, Rhaegar raped him, you know, Know, like kind of like an apology, like apologizing for the sins of her family. Talking know? about how, yeah, like how she. Everybody always says such great things about Rhaegar, but he raped her, and how horrible that is. In that, that that doesn't go mentioned, you know. Right, and then and then that's when Jon Snow drops the truth bomb because Jon Snow is like Rhaegar didn't rape Lyanna. Rhaegar loved her. He he took care of her. He treated her well. They had a mm-hmm. son together. That son was named Aegon Targaryen. And he said that son was raised by Ned Stark as a bastard. You know, he's all, and that bastard's <laughs> me, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he did a Fortnite dance in front of her. <laughs> and, he then, like, a and, then, and then Ninja popped up for some reason. Uh, no, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, and and. And then you can see, like, the five stages of grief, like, instantly flash in Daenerys's, like, face, like, in a nanosecond. Because at first she's like, she's like, kind of like, no, that can't be. And then she's, and then she's like, if that's true, then that means you are, you, you are the last male Targaryen. That means you are the true heir to the Iron Throne. And that's where it kind of sticks. It's like, yeah. there's like a part of anger, because she's like, you're trying to usurp me. Yeah, yeah. And he doesn't even, she, she points that out to him and he looks kind of like taken aback, like, like that, that's where she went with it, you know? Yeah, I, think, I, that came up. I, yeah. I think, I think he's conflicted now. I, I don't, I don't think he knows quite what to do at this point. Like if, if he should try to take the throne himself or if he should just let Daenerys happen because like he, he, he kept saying multiple times he's not a king. He's not interested in ruling. That's not. That's not his I don't, I don't think that's on his his mind at all though. I think I think he is thinking about their relationship. Yeah, I think he's thinking about their relationship. And he's she like, immediately went to succession. He, he's trying to do the honorable thing by not keeping secrets in the relationship, right? Yeah, and, and <laughs> well, that's the thing is that when um when she reacts in anger and brings up you know that you're in line for the succession ahead of me, you have a claim. His look, he gets kind of like a look like, like, what are you talking about? He's like confused. It's, it's not that he doesn't understand <laughs> the succession. It's that he's, he expected her to be like, you know, ew, you're my nephew. Oh, yeah. And we totally that. fucked, you know, like, cause this is kind of what's weighing on John. What's weighing on John is like, what does this mean for us? And what's weighing on Daenerys right. the second he reveals this to her is what does this mean about me? Oh, yeah, because Daenerys doesn't give a shit. I mean, yeah. When the series begins, and Daenerys destiny was basically to marry her brother and be and be her brother's wife. So you think a little nephew incest phases her? No, she <laughs> is like laser focused on that throne. She and is this, guy, this is yeah. And this yeah. kind of surprises John. It, it just takes him aback because she's like now basically not indirectly accusing him of trying to us- usurp her, you know? And he's like, what? What? Like, like that's that's the, the not even on his mind. It's not even something he's thinking about at that point you know right, right. he's right. he's only thinking about them and what it means and what he's it means like a, for who he is because he, he just found out he's somebody he didn't know he was yeah, before now he's finding out that Daenerys has a one-track mind you yeah. Know? yeah and that that's kind of the moment where kind of just he he picks up on that but nothing gets to get resolved because as we said every time Daenerys gets pissed off in a scene in this episode she gets cut yeah, off there's an interruption and we hear the battle we hear like the horns ringing right because three horns for white walkers yeah because the battle's about to begin and then we cut to a white walker like horse horse feet like on a hill overlook white walkers on the hill overlooking winterfell 
shit's going down, and then the episode ends. Like, yeah. They, yeah. Well, John gives Daenerys a look. Yeah. Like, uh, like let's you know let's get on those dragons or something. So, like, so, let's so, let's go. Yeah, and so, Daenerys so, kind of returns it like, yeah, but she still has that look of kind of like anger well, in her face. Well, yeah, but that argument's gonna have to wait until they they both survive the battle. If that's gonna be the whole next episode. Yeah. They're gonna they're gonna the episode is gonna begin with like the sounds of battle, and then it's gonna cut an episode. And the battle's already over, and then she's gonna go. Now, what about this thing you just told? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna, gonna be a huge. That's gonna be a huge. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be a huge thing. The battle is gonna happen like end five minutes into the episode, most of it off screen. Yeah. <laughs> All of it off screen. You'll just hear the sounds of battle. Yeah, you'll just hear. Yeah. <laughs> Next week's episode is uh, being talked about as perhaps the biggest battle ever filmed. Like they're they're comparing it to and, and saying it might even be bigger than you know the Battle of Helm's Deep and the Lord of the Rings series, which was fucking massive. <laughs> So they've been talking about how, how long this took to film. It took like, I think like over a month to film this one episode, this one battle. They put, I think most of the budget for the season went into this episode. The episode's being directed by the guy, the same director that did Battle of the Bastards and Hard Home and basically their biggest battle episodes is, have all been directed by this one guy and, and he's directing this, this next episode too. And so that kind of brings us to our like last topic of the week here, which is our predictions for this big battle. And I'm going to make one big one right up front, which I think is going to be huge to the way the battle works and the, and the entire perception. Because the idea right now, when you think about it, is, well, how can they survive this? How can they possibly survive? It's like, they're well, they're going to lose, obviously. Oh, well, people are, gonna are, people are going to die. I mean, it's, it, the battle yeah. will but it's like everybody, everybody's on like immediately like, well, clearly they're going to lose. Most of them are going to die. How are they going to possibly get away though? How is that going to make work in a way that makes sense? It doesn't feel like cheat. And I think a big part of that, I, I don't think the battle is going to be well, the as, gonna be ever last as people think it is. Right. And, and I have one main reason, my, my first prediction for why that's the case. And that's, I don't think the Night King's there. Yeah. I don't think the Night King is actually there. Bran is expecting him to be there because because the Night King is trying like one of the Night King's number one goals is to try and kill the three eyed raven. Uh mm-hmm. you know, we've we saw throughout the series that the Night King has been aggressively pursuing Bran. All, all throughout the, uh, from, through beyond, when Bran was out beyond the wall, the Night King and his army were aggressively pursuing him. You know, so he Bran, marked him so he could find him and yeah. You know, it's, him. Yeah. So Bran kind of expects that if Bran's there, the Night King will be there. They hatch this whole strategy that, uh, Bran will be used as bait by the Weirwood tree. Theon volunteers himself and the Greyjoys to, to, to defend him right. while he's there as bait and John and Daenerys are planning to like, you know, ride on the dragons nearby that location so that when the Night King rears his head that they can jump into action. Right, right. But, like I said, I don't think the Night King's there at all. I think, and and the reason I think this, uh, I should bring up, the reason why I think the Night King's not there is because of, like, if you think about the narrative and where they're going to go after this episode. If the Night King's there, if if it's such a dominant thing, you only have a few possibilities of the way things can go. He's got a dragon. You know, so it's like anybody who can get away would basically only be able to be what on one of the other dragons because otherwise they're not going to be able to move fast enough. Well, you know, if, if Winterfall falls, yeah, Winterfall falls, where are they going to go next? You know, exactly. So it's like, are they going to just flat out defeat the forces of the White Walkers in this Winter. episode? That wouldn't if make they, sense. If they do it in episode three, that'd be kind of disappointing. Like, yeah, and so what's the rest of it's just Cersei and the Golden Company? Yeah, the rest of it's just fighting Cersei. I oh, guess. everybody dies, and then the yeah. rest. Of it's just Cersei and the Golden Company. <laughs> it's like you, you kind of like. like that these I, I would probably not watch the rest of that. I don't know. I would still watch see Cersei get eaten by a zombie. But other than that, yeah, it, it's just the whole the whole point is like you, if you if you really think about how the rest of the season can fit together in a way that kind of makes sense and that's satisfying. Like this battle cannot be the conclusive battle with the White Walkers. It can't. And if that's the case, then, you know, you also don't want, you know, all of the main characters that are up in the north because they're basically, basically every character that we care about is in the north. Like, if you think about it, is there a single character in the south that you give two shits about? Um... No. Because even Bronze headed up to the north. Yeah, well, everybody's in the north. We still, <laughs> we 
we're still in the South. Cersei, Kyburn, and Zombie Mountain. Yeah, who cares? They, they, all, they all need to be dead as fast as possible. Exactly. Nobody <laughs> cares. So it's like, you, you have to kind of like weigh that when, when you think about what the rest of the season's going to be. Also, like, I'm like, wondering, here. like, uh, also I'm wondering, like, with Bronn, you know, like, he was hired to kill Jamie and Tyrion. Is he going to do it in the middle of a big zombie battle? How's that going to work out? I don't understand, like, where that's going. Is, is he going to walk into, like, they're all fighting White Walkers and he's just going to try to shoot people with arrows? <laughs> there's there's a lot of different ways you could see that. I mean, how about this? Like, give it a poetic spin. Yeah. What if what if either Jamie or Tyrion dies and is, comes back as a White and he puts that White down with a Dragonglass right. arrow from that? Technically, he did what he was hired to do, right? <laughs> yeah, but I don't think Bronn has any intention of actually murdering him. I don't think he has to, yeah. And I, like, I mean, I, I sh- certainly went went get, went run into the middle of like a shitload of zombies, like just just to just to uh, carry out a hit. I'd be yeah. like, "Fuck that! I'm going as far the opposite direction as possible here." <laughs> and if he and if he is heading up north, I think he's not going to be doing that to kill them. He's going to be doing that because he has like that one moment where he's like, "Well, they are my friends, and I don't want them to die," kind of thing. Right. And or, it, it or, would be the irony would come from him actually doing something killing one of them. <laughs> well, no, I mean killing one of them, but as a white. Right. So he does kill them, but it's because they've been resurrected as a white. So, so it's kind of like he's putting so them out one, of their misery at one, that point. Which one becomes a white, Tyrion or Jamie? Uh, see, I don't know, cause I don't, I don't even necessarily know if I think that that's where it's gonna go. I'm just saying that with Braun, like that would be a story that would feel Game of Thrones-ish to me, you know? Right, right. No, I get what you're saying. I, cause I do think Jamie is gonna die in this episode. I, I think, I, think, I don't know if that's how he's he gonna die because, though. Because, because I think, I, th- I think this episode was the, the conclusion of his redemption arc. You know, yeah. You know, well, you know, once he you know, once he yeah, fights or, and defends, you know, Winterfell. Once he's actually fighting and defending it, that's it. Pretty that's, much, yeah, know. that's it. You, you know, you know, like like they, you know, they do this for dramatic, where they bring they bring a character into focus and they kind of wrap up all the loose ends surrounding that character, and then they. <laughs> you know, yeah. and it feels like they're they're doing that with Jamie. Yeah, definitely. I so I I, I think whole, Jamie's going to die this episode. Like, uh, meeting Bran and like apologizing, settling the whole pushing Bran out the window thing. That feels I think like, Bran's going to die too. That feels that feels like tying up a loose end, right? That feels yeah. like yeah. But I think Bran's going to die too. No, like that doesn't make sense. Yeah, I think he's going to die because he he made the because of the mistake he made. That goes back to my first prediction that the Night King's not there. But every every every. So they they, they set up their entire battle plan Everything based on the Night King like, being the, there. The Three-Eyed Raven is important for the final battle. The Three-Eyed Raven needs to be alive. No, Az- Azura High is important for the battle. He, the Three-Eyed <laughs> Raven is important to, to, to still certain bits of information, but he might have already done that. Like He might have already done what he needs to do, or he could do it still in the next episode. And right. once he's done that, he's no longer nece- it's no longer necessarily important. I'm going to disagree. I don't think that's going to happen. I I think we're gonna see if gonna, if the first if yeah. my first theory is true that the Night King is not there then that that shows a crucial mistake that Bran has made and if that's the case I think that is his death meal that's like the that's gonna be the you know the Night King outmaneuvering him and it's gonna lead to his death. So that that's my prediction. We differ on this one. We do. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of other characters that die. I, I don't know how many more of like the the main main characters are going to die. I don't I'm think not. John or Daenerys are going to die this episode. No, because, well, that would kind of undercut the whole drama thing they set up at the end of this episode, right? Like the whole bomb and Daenerys processing it. Like, yeah, I set some something like that up and then kill one of them so that nothing, so that goes nowhere. It's going to be more like <laughs> secondary and and third tier characters yeah, like yeah, yeah. secondary for example i think jorah's gonna die right jorah's probably gonna die i don't i think he's kind of reached the end conclusion of his arc too so i think he's gonna die i think there's a chance that varies could die like think of it like Daenerys and John are like top tier characters. So like if one of them dies, it will be further towards the end of the season and it will be yeah. like some heroic sacrifice. Yes. Yeah. I think that I I don't know about Davos or Tormund. I don't think Brienne's gonna die. 
I do think that, and I mentioned this in my, in when we did our predictions for the full season, our death predictions, but I think that's when this is going to happen is, is Grey Worm and Missandei are both going to die and be yeah. turned into whites. Are you prepared for a possibility Tormund might die? Uh, I, I, am I, I, I think it could happen. I'm I, I think there's a pretty that. good chance it could happen. I'm not prepared for that. Yeah, I, I, that would be a hard one for me. I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. The hardest for me would be Arya. Yeah. Like a big part of me is saying there's a good chance she's going to die, and then a bigger part of me is saying, shut your damn mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I think, I think somebody beloved is gonna bite, bite it. Like, I, I do believe that they, they are, they are gonna break your heart next time. Like I said, for me, I think it's, I think Jamie and Bran are gonna die. Those are gonna be the two, like, major characters that are gonna die, in my opinion. I don't know if anybody else will. That's, that's that big. They're gonna, they're gonna resurrect Oberyn and kill him again. I mean, if we're, if we're talking about who the (laughs) biggest, (laughs) if we're talking about who the biggest characters are that are gonna to be involved in this battle. It's got to be Jamie, Daenerys, John, Sansa, Tyrion, Arya, Bran. Right. Yeah, that's right. pretty much it. Those those will be those would be the main characters that are in this setting. Everybody else is like secondary or, or worse, you know. All right. Well, we will. of those, I think we'll lose Jamie and Bran. I don't I don't think we'll lose any of the others. Well, well, there's uh, less than 24 hours from when we're doing this podcast, so we will see. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see what it ends up being. Oh, uh, it's it could be devastating. I know this weekend we got Avengers Endgame, which which both you and I watched. Which yeah. I don't know about you. You, but that that jerked some major crocodile tears out of my eyes. I'm not going to say anything on the podcast because you know I I know people I know people are sensitive to spoilers. I'm, I'm not going to say sorry. I'm just going to say I cried. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I I cried too. I, I legit cried. At and I, I have a feeling I might be crying even harder. Oh God, I. I hope <laughs> But we'll this see. Episode. Probably, yeah. I have a feeling that that's correct. There's going to be a lot of that, like, choked up feeling where it feels like, you know, you have a sore throat because you're so choked up, you know? Mm-hmm. I think yeah. that's going to be a big chunk of the episode. By the way, this episode is 80 minutes long. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's legit. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited for it, especially after two weeks of, like, really slow episodes. And it's funny because I'm, I'm watching how upset people are getting about the episodes being slow. And that's kind of how I felt after the first episode that like, I still liked the episode, but I was right, like, come I on, get on with it. But yeah, I didn't I feel that way at all about the second episode just because I thought it was so well done. And I like that whole last night on earth that kind of mood night. to it, you know, it, like it, I, it was basically the calm before the storm. Yeah. It, it almost feels like that this should have been episode one of the season. Right. And, and that, you know, and then episode two would be the battle, you know, but we, we had that other episode and using two like slow episodes back to back is a little, a little rough for some fans so but this episode is like this is like the real return of game of thrones you know this is what everybody's been waiting for since the season finale last year or like right. two years ago they weren't waiting for uh you know john and daenerys to sing a whole new world while riding dragons <laughs> They, they were, they were waiting for the battle with the dead. So th- this is it coming up this week. So everybody be excited about that. So yeah, that, that's it for our discussion. All we have left is to talk about what's coming up in the next week. So we're recording this on Saturday. So yesterday on Friday, April 26, 2019, Chambers debuted on Netflix. Shira and the Princesses of Power returned to Netflix. The Protector came to Netflix and so did Yankee. Then on Saturday, April 27th, that's today, The Sun returned to AMC. Sunday, April 28th, besides Game of Thrones, third episode, you have The Red Line debuting on CBS and Deep state on epics or as they'll, they will be forever known, the shows nobody was watching or talking about on Sunday, April 28th. <laughs> on Tuesday, April 30th, The 100 returns on The CW. I gotta catch up. I still haven't seen the rest of the last season. Oh, I gotta catch up. Baki comes to Netflix, as does Ingress, the animation. Do you know anything about Ingress? Uh, a little bit, I guess. I don't really care about it. Well, Ingress is, j- just to sum it real quick, Ingress is the game that Pokemon Go came from. Yeah. The developer was- who made P- Pokemon yeah. Go made a game called Ingress First that d- does much of the same stuff. It just has this more like sci-fi story, darker sci-fi story attached to it rather than Pokemon. And uh, yeah, they're making an animation for Netflix. So that's all you need to know. 
On Wednesday, May 1st, The Name of the Rose comes to Sundance. It's a foreign series. On Thursday, May 2nd, iZombie returns to the CW. On May 3rd, Tuck and Birdie comes to Netflix, as does Dead to Me and Undercover. And Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell comes to Adult Swim slash Cartoon Network for another season. So that's it. Nothing that's, like, huge. I'd say kind of the bigger ones are probably, what, The 100 and iZombie are probably the big ones. Right. But those are kind of like, you know, lesser known, not like huge shows. It's all just going to be about this episode of Game of Thrones. It's, it's almost like Game of Thrones is premiering again. Yeah, yeah, it is. This is, this is like the real premiere. Yes. <laughs> like, uh, I, I agree. Like, uh, they, they were saying the uh, ratings were down for this episode from the premiere. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree that I think those ratings are going to jump right back up for the next episode. Well, they were down because the premiere's episode ratings were like through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> but, if, but if this doesn't beat the premiere's ratings, then I don't know. Because, <laughs> yeah, this well, is going to be a much more exciting episode. This is like where the good stuff happens. Whenever they measure those ratings, it's always about the initial view. So the well, reason they, why well, the premieres and finales finale like, always have much higher review, well, like ratings than, than the other episodes during the season. It's not like people watch the premiere and then don't watch the second episode. It's that they're not as urgent to watch the second episode. Well, well, here's here's the thing, like because of the ratings I've been uh, I've been rating do account for streaming and then. And like DVR at the end, they tech. Yeah, it. but it gets yeah. less points. Like it gets the most. There's like it's got a weird al- algorithmic kind of point system attached to. Like the most points are for live over right. the air you know, broadcast ratings. Those those get the most points. Those are kind of like, if you compare it to like our electoral college, those are like Iowa, you know? <laughs> Where like me being in California, somebody in Iowa is voting, has like 10 times the voting power I do. You know, like a streamer would be like a California voter and a live viewer of the broadcast channel would be a Iowa voter, you know? Okay, right, right. Okay, yeah, I get So it. there's like point values attached to each one, like kind of what's more valuable. And and that's why, like I said, like premiere season premieres and season finales always have higher ratings, and it's just because there's more urgency. It's it's not because people just go like between the season premiere and the season finale, they go, well, I'm just not going to watch the rest of the episodes. I'll mm-hmm. just tune back in for the finale. You know, it's that's not what happens. Obviously, it, what happens is that they're just less urgent about it. They're not like I have to tune in, I have to be there for it live. This is a different case. Like we said, this is almost like a new season premiere. It's like it's like the season started and it's going to start again after only two weeks, you know? Right. So this could see like a huge ratings jump because people, people know about this episode being like the big deal episode of the season. So sure. It's going to, should be huge. Yes. But, uh, so yeah, as we mentioned next week, we're, that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about this huge third episode of the final season of Game of Thrones. Look forward to it. Yeah. And until then, you can reach me on Twitter. I'm at Tyson Gifford. You can reach Will. He is at Voxel Hero. Check out our Facebook page and our YouTube channel, as well as our site, thetotalscreen.com. All of the links to those different social channels can all be found there as well. You can subscribe to the podcast through any major podcast client like iTunes or Pocket Cast. And the entire backlog of our podcast is available on our YouTube channel. So thank you, everybody, for listening. Good night. Good night. If you would like to reach out to us and make a comment, send an email to contact at thetotalscreen.com. Stay tuned to The Total Screen for the very best 